We're in Berlin, no? Yeah. Good. Yeah, Berlin. Fernando, I'm, I'm in Berlin, yes. And you're in Buenos Aires? Yes. Yeah, so it's like the most stunning thing for me still as you're like on the other side, on the other hemisphere. So here it's autumn and for you it's it's uh, spring, right? Yeah, yeah. It's still a little cold, but it's getting <laughs> it's getting springy. <laughs> it's getting springy, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so it, you know what is like maybe most interesting for me about you and me really is that we kind of like um, have known from each of each other for a very very long time, but I know very little about you, very very hmm. little. Obviously, I I know the things that we kind of like what we talked about when we met, and uh, also like what others have been telling me about you. <laughs> 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 but I would I would like to use the opportunity here uh, uh, to, to talk with you about you really uh, at least as a starting point. So Good, yeah, I think maybe I know more about you because I saw you playing more than you saw me playing. That's true. Could be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, t tell 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 us a little bit really like about. How did you get into music and um, what was your childhood like and stuff like that would be good to know. I, I was, uh, I grew up in Rosario, which is a, a city, not, not Buenos Aires, but it's like uh, three hours away. It's like the second city in the country. And um, uh, basically I was uh, obsessed with music mm -hmm. since I was very little, mm -hmm. I, since I was very little. My, I have uh, clear memories of wanting to get inside of the speaker to see where music came from. <laughs> like, where is this coming from? Where, is, where does music, it, it was not uh, philosophical, you know, where does music come from? But it was really like, wow. <laughs> so I, I remember that at a very early age, they really wanted, I wanted to get into the speaker. <laughs> where music was coming from that is amazing that is the the first yeah. time i hear anybody say that <laughs> yeah and an another memory i have which is i think it was quite uh at, at the time it was uh for me it was a strong thing like i i had this thought what if uh I, I, in those days, we had the turntables, you know, vinyl, the, the, the original vinyl, not, not the, the new vinyl. Mm -hmm. The <laughs> records were records, vinyl. Mm -hmm. And I had this thought, what if I'm playing? I, I remember it was a Palito Ortega, which is a Latin American, very, very good musician, but very cheesy too. Mm -hmm. And I remember, what if the, the record goes like, um, it keeps like, you know, when the record is scratched, that it goes like repeating. Mm -hmm. What if I can make music with this thing uh -huh. repeating? You know? so, and I never heard of any loops or sampling or anything like. But it was like this thought: What if, like, do, 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 can I make? I can make music with this. So I had these very weird thoughts when I was little, uh -huh. and um, I was playing guitar. I was. Uh, I, I, I wanted to be. A drummer originally and i asked my father to to get a drum for me but he said no play guitar it's better because then you can take it anywhere the drums is so complicated i think he didn't want me to 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 be so noise noisy at home but uh, basically <laughs> so he he kind of encouraged me to play guitar mm -hmm. i i i never was a, like um, a guitar freak like uh, I, I just happened to play guitar, something like this, and, and I, I enjoyed it. And, and this is my instrument, but it, it, it wasn't really my dream to become a guitarist, you know, like like Hendrix or Harrison. Or like, I was interested in music. Mm -hmm. Music mm -hmm. was my main mm -hmm. interest. Mm -hmm. 
more than the guitar itself. Yeah, just just like for me, like the musical mm. instrument always came second. Like first was the music, really. Mm. And what, which age? How old were you when you got your first guitar? Um, maybe well, actually, when I was five years old, uh, I had I, actually it it was in Berlin that uh, what you say this 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 people who read the cards the like the tarot cards psychic kind of yeah 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 girlfriend of a friend you know Volker Volker Ren yes yeah well his girlfriend he he th threw the cards to me and he she said something very important happened to you when you were five years old and I thought. She said, yeah, something I can see something that changed your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you never know when they, they say these things to you. When mm -hmm. I wonder what maybe they beat me at school or, or, <laughs> or whatever. So I went back home in Argentina, in Rosario, and I found this photo of me, October, October 1970, mm -hmm. with a brand new guitar. So I was five years old. <laughs> so obviously that uh, that changed. That, that was when I was five years old and I was playing the guitar with uh, with only three strings, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like Tony's bass. <laughs> it was easier too. So I didn't care. I was just banging and playing. And then uh, I started taking lessons in what basically Argentinian folklore songs, folk songs, the basic chords, two or three chords, mm -hmm. not more than that. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't do the, the, you know, the barre, the thing. <laughs> so in school, in primary school, I wanted to play guitar in the in the team. And they said, sorry, but you can't, you have to play the, the bombo. You know, bombo is a traditional Argentinian drum. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 they sent me to the bombo because I couldn't play the F chord. <laughs> 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 but that was my that was my beginning and with a friend we started playing and playing and yeah so i when i was five years old i got my first guitar and then i got maybe when i was 10 i got an acoustic and then an electric so your your first guitar was what kind of was it a nylon string or yeah nylon string yeah mm -hmm. and was it a small small size still yeah yes. probably huh yeah it was smaller I can send you a photo. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, amazing, amazing, really. So I, I found this this photo. I'm 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 telling you about. Uh, I am like uh, with with my school uniform, you know, with the, like a suit. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like I have this kind of a cool pose with mm -hmm. the guitar. You know, I was I was five years old, <laughs> and uh, when when. Andy Summers record came out. The 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 book, you know his book, the the train I missed or something like this. His biography. I don't I don't know it. No. Yeah, in the cover, mm -hmm. in the cover, his photo. He has exactly the same pose. So I I can send you both photos. I was like <laughs> pretending I was Andy Summers or something, and I never heard about him. You know, there's there's this uh, photo of uh, Robert with his sister. Where he yeah. had like also like <laughs> posts like <Yes>. this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like for me and like you have always looked like like from you know when I saw you with the guitar or even in photos, like a person where it seems like you're even like you become you've become one with the instrument in like in physical terms. Mm -hmm. Like it feels as if the guitar is growing out of your body body somehow. <laughs> Yeah, some some other people said the same. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like part of my body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it uh, is. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe maybe it is. Yeah, you know, like uh, for me, it was much later. I was fifteen when I got my first guitar. Right, mm. but really, really late. And and as as you have said, like music is first. Like music was always first for me. And even even the fact that I'm now kind of like also playing performing on stage uh, is just a kind of like a coincidence or <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It's a side a side effect of actually loving music you know yeah same thing robert said that music calls on unlikely 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 people or something i always mm -hmm. feel very touched by this i think i'm very 
unlikely. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I say I'm not a guitarist. I'm just the, I I play guitar, but I'm not a. Yeah, yeah, a exactly, exactly. Yeah. But you played piano before, no? Before before you were. Yeah. I played, I played, um, actually like the, um, the mandolin was the first stringed instrument I played in fifth. Right. So <laughs> it was interesting. Um, but at that point I really had no sense of, um, what it means to play an instrument. Like it was mm. not something that, and I, you know, I, 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 um, I've like noticed and like realized over the last couple of years that this whole concept of learning you know, and, and practicing was something that was totally alien to me before I actually uh, went to guitar craft. Really, that's that's yes. where I learned about it. And I, I really, because in school, I was kind of like talented enough to just kind of like breeze through without ever doing my own work, you know. Um, and it was the same with, with music classes, like the music school mm -hmm. I went to, I you know, like from the very beginning, I learned to read music. Um, but that also meant, funnily enough, it meant that I never really practiced something because, well, why do I have to practice if I can just read it and play it, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so that was that was kind of like, and and I wonder how that was for you. Um, I had many yeah, years for me. Yeah, for me, the concept of practice was what's the for like sports people, you know, to practice, go to practice <laughs> sport, go run or do exercises, but with music it was a, here's the chord yeah okay yeah i can play it here's another chord yeah okay i can play it mm -hmm. scales no. <laughs> <laughs> so when i got to guitar craft is when i started uh, learning about practice to to improve or to to learn something so once you learn it you have to practice for you to to have it really like like i i I still struggle a lot to to practice. It's not in my mm -hmm. uh, in my nature, you know. I, I practice because if I don't practice, I can't play. I like finger my fingers are really stiff, and yeah. I, mm -hmm. I can't play. So it, I feel bad. Uh, so mm -hmm. I practice kind of because I have to. But it's mm -hmm. not in my. I'm not like. Um, not natural like uh, i don't know I, I don't know if for anybody is natural but i see some people like they can be like for eight hours you know practicing and practicing and practicing all their lives mm -hmm. and they can't live with it and if i can get away i get away but but i know that if i don't practice uh and when i practice whoa it's so different it makes mm -hmm. a huge difference mm -hmm. Yeah, again, that's that's very, very, very similar for me. Mm. I, mm. I also, uh, like I said, I wasn't even interested really in playing music. It was more about, mm. uh, you know, I didn't have a choice. If I wanted to hear music, I had to play it myself. Mm. And that's mm. why, you know, um, I was lucky that I learned some some piano um, when mm. I was like between 11 and, and 14 or something. Um, mm. And yeah. Yeah, isn't yeah, is it? Yeah, that is that is kind of I ask because I it's kind of obvious for me when I when I see your approach, I can I know that you have some knowledge of the the piano, which I don't have at all. It's like mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So that that's, I think, uh, influence your playing a lot and your your vision of music, which is very good. I wish I, I had this. Uh, now it's too late to get into the piano, but yeah, I was I was lucky because I um, I started very early with this uh, like preschool music lessons and mm. and mm. I started learning music with just really individual notes. They gave us like a wooden wooden block that was tuned to A, ah. right? Like a small yeah. uh, marimba you know yes and it was just one note like an a and an e and and so i learned all the notes like one note per week or per month i can't remember yeah. obviously and and i still th i still think that way like for me like ah. each individual note is like uh, a whole world ah. you know? ah. and it's sort of like an absolute thing for me yeah it's, yeah it's not like that i can just transpose a piece of music and it is it's not the same if you transpose it you know like but for yes. for, for a lot of people you know, there is not this sense of the absolute, but for me, there are some somewhat is with pitches. 
Yeah, some people, they just do the math and they say, well, it's okay. It's uh, A plus one. <laughs> it's B. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so how was this for, um, for you with um, kind of like nervousness, like performance, uh, uh, anxiety and that? Did you have anything like that? No. I, fortunately, I don't, I don't get that. I don't have that. Uh, I'm... I'm okay. Maybe at some point, if it was like a at the beginning, you know, a huge gig or something, there was some anxiety. But never, I was never like um, stage fright or anything. Really, the most uh, frightening performing experiences were in guitar craft courses. Mm -hmm. When we used to get into, and you know, and this some people don't know what guitar craft courses led by Robert Fripp. We used to to get in, in in the dining room when during the meals and and perform there for everybody you know like everybody in the course is like looking at you and like watching your right hand and your hand and you like it's like it's so much pressure and you are supposed to apply everything that is said in the courses and if you are more advanced it's even worse because it's like you are supposed to be good you know like and everybody's really watching sometimes <laughs> You have people like 20 centimeters away, like really looking at your hand and you're trying to play something really difficult. You know, in those situations, I remember like I remember many years ago when I was um, working on Fracture, actually, in some of the courses, along with Christian, uh, Alex, Anthony Feide. Mm -hmm. We used to work on, we were, we were the, the high flyers in the courses and we were so, oh, yeah, let's play faster and faster and faster. And, and sometimes as a challenge, I used to go into the dining room by myself and play Fracture. And then I was frightened because it was way, I knew it was way beyond my, my capacity and the piece is so difficult. So I remember that my, my hands like, well, ah, I could, were like, frozen you know i couldn't move my fingers those were the only situations i remember being really nervous nervous but uh, there was a lot of like uh, self stuff and judgment and all this but mm -hmm. but playing for 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 the people like for the audiences i i i'm i'm lucky i don't i don't get nervous yeah that's good that's good yeah. Yeah, it was was a huge problem for me for a long time. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, until when? Like about age twenty five or so. Ah. Then then it got better. But but really, like to be quite honest, only the the international touring with Tony and and Pat really then kind of like put me on the spot and obviously mm. uh, being in that kind of professional like very professional situation in front of bigger audiences with like a huge sound and stuff um that's where you really kind of like can't re even afford to have any any uh performance anxiety because then it just is not yeah. en not enjoyable at all you know yeah. so and and then at at some point i realized okay i'm i'm even you know i'm uh, feeling better on stage than in front of you know than watching people on stage somehow <laughs> like i'm more nervous when i watch other people play <laughs> it's it's oh. true it's true <laughs> yeah 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 so it became more natural yeah yeah it be became totally natural yeah hey and well, I, I yeah i oh. i must i must say must say that uh, along with many many other things that um in in early days in guitar craft i remember i, I learned from robert this this shrug i think it is like if you make a mistake mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what instead of oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm so bad <laughs> hey so which which year was that that you had your first course with robert my first course was in 1989 Mm -hmm. I, I actually went from Rosario. I, I was in Rosario playing in some rock bands, rock, pop bands, like, um, 
Eurythmics, Brian Adams uh, kind of stuff, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and also playing in some The Police, U2, The Specials mm -hmm. kind of bands. And then I, I decided it, it was like an, an enlightenment kind of thing. Like I have to go to England to, to find Robert Fripp. <laughs> and I was in Rosario. This was the end of uh, 1988. Mm -hmm. And I went to London without nothing. Just I got a. I kind of uh, I, I, I really I said now I kind of um, forged a ticket <laughs> to, to get to London. <laughs> Somehow I made them some. <laughs> it, it was a valid ticket, but it was. Uh, Okay. So I, I I made it to London. I made it to London, and I went the 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 day after I arrived in London, I went to the E G Records office to look for Robert Fripp because I didn't have any connection at all. I didn't know anything about where to find him or nothing. I only know I only knew of Robert. I mean, those days there was no internet. There was only magazines, guitar player magazines musician magazine and the records that was it mm -hmm. and from the records you know from the album cover i read 63a king's road london mm -hmm. so the day after i arrived in london without nothing i only i only had a, a contact uh, address for three brazilian guys who were working, of course, illegally in London, and they would get me a job in a hotel cleaning or in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And they, they, I, we, I shared a flat with them. So I, I basically I went to London, arrived there. I met these Brazilian guys. They gave me a bed in their room. They, they got me a job in a hotel cleaning, very crappy hotel. <laughs> The hotel is still there, by the way, uh, but improved. Uh, and so next day I, I went to EG Records and I, I rang the bell and said, hello, <laughs> I come from Argentina. I am looking for Robert Fripp. <laughs> and they say, well, we are sorry, uh, <laughs> get out, something like this. Wow. Yeah. So this was this story was beginning of 1989. That's that's incredible. So there's yeah. re real commitment there. Yeah, I in Argentina, I was I mean, I had my girlfriend. I had my I was studying engineering, mm -hmm. civil engineering, mm -hmm. nothing to do with music. Mm -hmm. But I was so obsessed with music and I was really not obsessed, but I was really into Robert Fripp and Adrian Bellew and Phil Manzanera. Those were my heroes, mm -hmm. the Beatles. Ah, Beatles are okay, but Fripp, Manzanera, and and Adrian Bellew were like, I this is what I need, mm -hmm. so I just went for it. Mm -hmm. I just went for it. It was a that's why I say, it's kind of um, it was kind of an enlightenment, you know, like a, a vision. You know, I I have to go to, and I was telling people in Rosario, I'm going to London in two weeks. Where are you going to do? I'm going to look for Robert Fripp. <laughs> and they say, yeah, sure. OK, yeah. <laughs> OK, yeah. See you next month. Have a good holiday or something. So what, I, what, I, what happened then? I uh, I went to EG Records one time. They say, get out. And this, I went the second time, maybe two days later. Mm -hmm. And they said, at least they opened the door this time. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, well, they were like talking between them, the, this, this, this women at the um, reception, and they said, yeah, but maybe he needs a, an appointment with uh, Chris Kettle. Mm -hmm. So uh, then they say to me, yeah, yeah, at least if you have an appointment with Chris Kettle, do you know, they, they say, you know, Chris? I said, no, I don't know who is. Well, no, then get out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next day or next week, I go back. Mm -hmm. And I said, "This is this is um, in, in one of the in one of an 
animation movies for kids. This scene is exactly what I did. <laughs> I went back and I said, Ring, hello, I have an appointment with, with this man. And they said, what time? I said, three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so they asked the guy and the guy says, of course, I, I don't know anything about this guy. So, but let him in mm -hmm. to see what, what he wants. So at least I could speak to somebody mm -hmm. who had a relationship with Robert. Mm -hmm. So I said, I came to, from Argentina a few days ago and I'm looking for Robert Fripp. He, I, I, I want him to teach me how to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, I will send, I will pass the message on to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I gave him my, I didn't even have a phone, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, my address, um, Chepstow Place in Notting Hill. Mm -hmm. And I went back to my job in the hotel. And uh, a week later, I received a letter from Robert. <laughs> Dear Fernando, uh, I heard that you're looking for me. What can I do for you? I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Signed Robert Fripp. Still in those days, I thought it was like a secretary or something that would like, just like, uh, mm -hmm. but later I knew that it was himself. And so mm -hmm. I was, this was the, the beginning for me. What can I do for you? And, uh, so we uh, started, we, we, we got in touch, mm -hmm. but I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I really couldn't believe it. This happened in a week or something like this, two weeks. <laughs> Amazing. It changed you know, my life. It's, it's, it's <laughs> such a wonderful story because I think, yeah. you know, this, this, this kind of approach, let's call it approach, is, yes. is, is it's, approach that, it's an approach that works. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, not always, but I think like no. it kind of works if, you, if you're making sure that the, the person that you want to meet kind of like gets the message somehow. You know? and yes. back, back in that in the day it was difficult especially with the music business kind of like a, the music business people in between the fans yes. and the you know the musicians but nowadays it's easier i think yes I, I knew that if i say if i stayed in argentina and i would have done it the right way i would never get it like in argentina the the post the, the letters you know they, ne they never got anywhere it was so bad Mm -hmm. Nova, nobody ever would get my message. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for Robert Fripp. And on the other hand, I think my, my intention was genuine, was a good intention. It wasn't like, I'm a fan, you know, I want to, I want his autograph or something. Mm -hmm. It was really, um, I was looking for something serious, something good, something yeah, I was not. Uh, yeah, it was it was a I, good intention. I, I hear you. I know what you what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. And so, did you did you then uh, kind of have a personal meeting with Robert before you actually went to yeah. Guitar Craft? Or well, I, I kept working with in a hotel and some some restaurants like a Pizza Hut mm -hmm. and um, cleaning, which I, I was so bad at this. You know, cleaning, making beds. I don't know how I got these jobs, you know, I <laughs> still like, I can't believe, <laughs> but I got the jobs. I, 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 so I was working in hotels. I mean, uh, the hotels were really bad. Some hotels were like Victoria station area, you know, so dirty. And so mm -hmm. maybe that's why they got me. They need, <laughs> they didn't need the cleaning to be good. they just, yeah. And, um, so I said to Robert, I, I don't, I'm here in London. I want to, to learn. And he sent me information about a course that was going to happen in April, 1989 in Germany. And he said, you can apply for this course. And he said something like, I'm going to America now for another course in February, February 89, I think it was. Mm -hmm. It was a course and it was a music for non-musicians course too. Mm -hmm. And he said, which I was like, wow, 
he said, I can bring a guitar for you from America if you, if you like. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. An ovation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yes, please. Uh, so we were in touch about this. So we kind of said, okay, I'll see you. I will apply, uh, apply for the course in Germany in April and you will bring the guitar for me, which I couldn't believe it, but it was, it was true. Mm -hmm. So then I, I never heard from Robert again. And I was getting kind of anxious and nervous because it was the, the, the time was coming and I, I didn't know, will the guitar be there for me? What do I have to do? Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I decided to, well, I, there's a Phil Manzanera story side by side, I can tell you later, but oh. I, I decided to go to Cranbourne. I mean, like I, the, the envelopes that Robert was sending to me, the address was there. Mm -hmm. um, what did you say? The sender, the sender mm -hmm. address was there. So, because I didn't get any reply, I didn't have any phone number to call. So I was really, well, I need to know. So I thought what to do. I went there. So, <laughs> so I went there to <laughs> Cranbourne, to Red Lion House, and uh, I rang the bell again. <laughs> so, so watch out, maybe, maybe I ring your bell next week. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I was young. Mm -hmm. So uh, I rang, uh, well, I, actually, I didn't get to ring the bell because when I get to the door carrying Phil Manzanera's guitar on one hand. Mm -hmm. Robert came out from the car. Mm -hmm. And there's Robert Fripp. And I said to I said to him, <laughs> this is, I said, are you Robert? <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I, I didn't know. I mean, it was like this guy, you know, like he looked like Robert Fripp. But mm -hmm. I only knew photos from him, of him from the shows or from the records, you know, like, no, mm -hmm. not like um, Mm -hmm. normal guy so i said i said are you robert mm -hmm. and he said yes and you're not supposed to be here <laughs> <laughs> those were his, his first words to me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> so i explained that ah, well, the guitar i needed to know so that's why i decided to go and so on um so he said, yeah, come in. So he invited me in and he invited me for lunch. He's, we, we sat in the dining room in the actually before lunch prepared by Martin Schutke, actually. Um, before lunch, we sat in the, in the living room for, for a few minutes. And he said, what can I do for you? And I said, I, I, I want to learn how to play the guitar. And uh, maybe the way I said it or something, he thought I was for real or something like this. Um, but so he invited me for lunch. Robert was there. Toya was there. Martin Schutke had prepared lunch. Tony Gibal was there. And Hideo Morilla was there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know any of them. Uh, actually, Tony Gibal, I knew from the cover of uh, Live One, the League of Crafty Guitarists, Live One, but actually you, you don't, you, you couldn't see his face at all. But yeah, yeah. And so I had lunch and after lunch, Robert said, this is the guitar for you. And uh, Martin showed me the way out. And he said, yeah, here's your guitar, <laughs> get out. Thank you for coming, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> and so next time I saw them was in my level one course in Germany in April 1989. That was my official beginning. Although for me, the beginning was earlier. Yeah. Sounds like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my... So where, where in Germany was it? Do you remember the name of the place? Yeah. Regensburg, Tridendorf. Regensburg. Regensburg. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Re recently I found in... in on the internet, a photo of the, it's like a castle, Tridendorf castle mm -hmm. or however. Mm 
Mm -hmm. pronounced. Mm -hmm. The castle is still there, maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, that was my first course. Wow, that's already quite the story, right? <laughs> Up to yeah. that point. <laughs> yeah. hey, so how, yeah. how, was, how was your English back then? Was that already good? Well, uh, uh, more or less. I, I, I knew some, I, I had taken lessons, <clears throat> but actually when I got to London, I, I didn't get anything. It was so difficult, mm -hmm. so difficult. Uh, the way people spoke, I, I couldn't understand. So, but when, so I, I was working usually with um, uh, in the hotels, cleaning hotels. I was working with uh, mostly Latin Americans or people from other countries. And uh, when I was working in the pizza restaurants, uh, I managed. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to the guitar craft course, um, many people, most people were Germans, so I couldn't understand. So this, that English, I could understand the foreigners English, mm -hmm. yeah. but the London, the English people was more difficult. Mm -hmm. So I, I, then I started learning, but with Robert, uh, actually, uh, I could understand almost everything of his English. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I think um, it was kind of like a very, uh, like a kind of English, I don't know if dialect is the right word, that Robert is speaking, that I hadn't heard before. At least this this is something I can say. Yeah, but I think I understood most of it. Um, mm. But, you know, I'm so curious, like, why did you get to Cranbourne with, with Ray Manzanares? Guitar. With Phil, Phil Manzanera's Phil, Phil guitar. guitar, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the, <clears throat> as I said, uh, my guitar heroes basically were Robert, Adrian and Phil Manzanera. Ah. Like B B Brian Eno's albums, I loved them, the solo albums. Brian Eno's, you know, um, Before and After Science, Here Come the Warm Jets. And I was like, wow, who is this? Robert Fripp and Phil Manzanera. I was really crazy about that. So <laughs> when I was in London waiting for Robert's uh, response about answer about the guitar, I saw a sign that Phil Manzanera was playing at um, the Porcel Room or Queen Elizabeth Hall, one of those uh, South Bank venues. Mm -hmm. Phil Manzanera with his band. Wow. So I went. And um, I went to the show, I, 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 I bought the tickets and I saw the show. And after the show, I, I, I was Argentinian again. So I decided to go and meet Phil Manzanera. <laughs> <laughs> so I just went backstage and I said to the guy, the, the guy who was like guarding backstage, I said, just like this, I said, have you seen Phil? And they said, yeah, he's there. So I just went in <laughs> with no badge, nothing. So it's just very natural, you know, like, oh, have you seen Phil? Yeah, he's there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so I went there and I, I, I meet Phil and I said, Phil, hello, my name is Fernando. I, I just came from Argentina and uh, I'm, I'm, I came to England to look for Robert Fripp. And he said, well, wow, Robert, yeah. And then he started speaking Spanish to me because he's actually, um, he, uh, he speaks uh, Spanish very fluently. Mm -hmm. He grew up in Colombia and in Cuba and Venezuela. Mm -hmm. So, and he said, oh, you're from Argentina. This is all in Spanish, no? Mm -hmm. This is great. My, my brother is from Argentina too. Mm -hmm. So... And he introduced me to Bosco de Oliveira, his percussion player. And Bosco is from Brazil. So it was this, suddenly I'm in this uh, Latin American connection with, with my, my hero, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, was really nice. <laughs> and he said, yeah, great. Uh, he's a very nice guy, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, come to my studio next Monday and we have a talk. And then he gave me his number and then uh, I went to his studio and uh, I could play 
not all his songs and his solos, but I could play most of his songs and solos by heart. I was such a fan. Mm -hmm. This this record, Diamond Head, I love it. Mm -hmm. I really love it. So he was really surprised. He was like, wow, this guy is not just a fan, you know, he's like, wow, he's mm -hmm. <laughs> from the family or something like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And then he was, he was uh, him and Ian McCormick, who died some years ago. Uh, is, he was also called Ian MacDonald. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was a journalist and record producer. And he, Ian MacDonald was there, or McCormick, the brother of Mil, Bill McCormick from 801. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he was there and he, they were making an album for a... Um, pop bands producing an album. It was called Sub Rosa. Uh -huh. And they said, uh, would you like to play on the album? And I said, sure. <laughs> so I started going to Phil, Phil's studio quite often in those days. So we became friends with him and with Ian McCormick. And uh, I said, uh, Phil said, do you have a guitar to practice or something? I said, no, I'm waiting for maybe Robert will bring a guitar for me or something. So he said, yeah, bring, take one of my guitars. So he gave me a guild, a white guild guitar mm -hmm. for me to practice. And I, so that's, that's the guitar I was carrying. So I was, I, I, I went to Cranbourne carrying Phil Manzanera's guitar on one hand. And I came back to <laughs> London carrying also the guitar that Robert Fripp <laughs> brought for me from America. It was like, I remember crossing the, the bridge from Waterloo Station with the, the wind in my head, in my face. I, I really remember this moment. I was like, is this real? You know, like I couldn't believe it. A few weeks ago, I was in Rosario studying engineering, not studying very much, but <laughs> in the university. <laughs> Have you uh, repeated this kind of brave <laughs> act of... No. Ever that again, was enough. That was enough. I, I, I didn't need. No, <laughs> it was really out of need kind of thing. I mean, I mean, please, I mean, <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> and actually, no, I never, I never. I, 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 as I said before, this is also not in my nature. I'm not a sneaky guy, you know, who does this, who forges airplane tickets and who goes into backstages. I'm not like that at all. I'm like, uh, I go by the rules, really. Uh, but the, in, so those two things, and then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that is yeah. kind of like uh, absolutely amazing, the story, really. Yeah, really. I, I, I keep going with the Manzanera story because this is, this yes, is please. for me, this is, if I may, this yeah. is very yeah. interesting. I I was really, as I said, a big fan of Manzanera's playing. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Phil's playing. I mean, he's he's not a guitar hero, you know, from Roxy Music. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I really loved it. I mean, and maybe <clears throat> maybe the connection with the Latin music because I love Latin American music. I really love uh, music from Litoral, Argentinian Litoral. I love. Um, uh, the, the music from the north of Argentina, the music from Latin America, I really love it. Mm -hmm. And um, and I really love the rock and the art, you know, the uh, King Crimson, Roxy Music, um, Soft Machine. So uh, maybe it's this, uh, the bridge kind of uh, thing that really got me uh, about Manzanera's playing. Mm -hmm. But anyways, we, we met with Manzanera <clears throat> over the years. We, we kept seeing each other over the years until um, he moved from that uh, studio in Virginia Water. And I didn't know where he moved. So I didn't have any phone number. And, <clears throat> and he had reformed Roxy Music. So he became famous again. Mm -hmm. And so it, as you said, it's more difficult to to reach musicians when they are like they are there you know like more even even if you are friends you know i want to speak to i know 
So I kind of lost touch mm -hmm. until he came to Buenos Aires with uh, David Gilmour. <clears throat> he was a guitarist in David Gil Gilmour's band when they came to Buenos Aires. I, I can't say when, but a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And then I, I contacted him and, uh, and he replied and oh fernando many years i haven't seen you and so on let's get together so we got together in the hotel for coffee and then he invited me to the show and so on so we made this connection again a few weeks later on a sunday morning he sent sends me a message and said fernando i'm uh, i've been invited uh, brian eno made some connections in buenos aires and uh, shared the connections with him. So he said, I was invited to go to Argentina, to play in Argentina. <clears throat> Would you like to be the guitarist in the band and the musical director and put a band together? <laughs> and I was really, of course. <laughs> Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I did. So I, I put a band together and we did a, a wonderful show together with uh, his his whole career from Roxy to his solo albums. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very nice show with, with guests, which I put together the band uh, with very, very fine Argentinian musicians. But when, when I was um, after the show, he was really happy with the show, how the whole thing went. It's on internet. I can send you the link if you're mm -hmm. interested. Mm -hmm. So after the show, we were having a breakfast in, in the hotel and I said, uh, I haven't seen you in many years. <clears throat> how, how did you trust that I would be good for the job? Because he just came, he never asked us for, I mean, we did, we've been doing rehearsals before he arrived in Buenos Aires mm -hmm. with the band. He never asked for anything. Mm -hmm. He never said, oh, send me the tapes to see how you guys are going, because maybe, Maybe I mean, maybe I have to change. He never asked for. He, he trusted completely, completely, and and we were good. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, how how did you trust? I I thought maybe he spoke to Robert, and he said, ah, this guy Fernando is he really good, and, or something? Because I I didn't know how he really trusted something really important on me, after having seen seeing seeing him in many years, mm -hmm. and he said instinct i knew that you were the right person and you'd be good for this mm -hmm. and i knew that everything would be fine mm -hmm. he said instinct mm -hmm. so that's for me it's a big lesson i know and it's uh, i'm really grateful for this wow wow mm. and so there to were make the story short. <laughs> yeah 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 no but there, there were uh, 20 or more years between uh yeah you know like well and so really, I, I haven't seen him for like 20 years mm -hmm. or 15 years. I haven't seen him. I had no contact with him at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, your London, your face in London, how, how long did it last? How long did you stay in London? A few years, uh, maybe, maybe one or two years. <clears throat> and then I got involved in the guitar craft courses. I really got involved. I went to my level one, my level two, my level three, and then my level four course. So the first course was one week and back to London. Second course was one week back to London. And then the next course was in America, in Claymont, three months. Mm -hmm. Back to Buenos Aires and then back to Claymont for one year. Mm -hmm. And then to London on and off. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to Germany, you know, the, the Grosterscher house. So yeah. I was really involved in in guitar craft, kind of full time. And in between courses, I would go to London to earn more money working in, in pizza huts or in hotels. Hey, so but your your girlfriend in Argentina, she wasn't waiting for you all those years. Well, uh, the, the first year, yeah. And then she came to she came with me. Uh, she was a saint, you know, like really. Mm -hmm. I really uh, I'm very thankful. Mm -hmm. She, yeah, she waited and uh, we were still together by letters mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes phone calls, but you know, in those days, yeah. 
even phone calls were difficult. Yeah. And uh, this, then the, for my level level four, <clears throat> she came with me to Claymont, mm -hmm. and we spent some time in Claymont. Then we went to Germany, but then 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 we uh, it, it didn't work. It was too difficult, mm -hmm. too difficult. Life in the courses is yeah. too hard, and yeah, uh, yeah and, and we couldn't continue. Yeah, but for the first time. Yes, she she waited, which mm -hmm. was a miracle too. <laughs> mm -hmm. So do you do you still remember when we first met or where we first met? Was it Alfeld or Grossdershow? Yeah, I th I think it was Alfeld because I would would have thought it was uh, Grossdershow because I was there a few times, hmm. but uh, back then I wasn't aware how much activity there really was there, you mm. know, like oh, I only knew about certain projects that were taking place. So I think I can't, I can't remember, but maybe we can find out at some point because like that was, that was the, the time of the white ovation, like mid nineties or early nineties. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I, yeah, yeah. I I have some memory, but I I don't know. Yeah, yeah the, um... you know, Alfred Alfred was my was my last course. Ah, then then I saw you in Gross Show. I think I saw you in Gross Show. I was there, not all the time, but pretty much mm -hmm. most of the time in most of the courses. Yeah. When was your first course in? In, in ninety one. Was in, yeah, yeah, I was in, there in, in Switzerland. Yeah, I was, was there. In, yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's where. We went. Wow, <laughs> thirty years. That's crazy. Huh? It's Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, in Switzerland, I think. I don't know if I was in that course. <laughs> I still, yeah. I still have the list. I still have the list of names somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, Lage La yeah. or something like this. Uh, I would. It was. Yeah. It was Schloss. It was Schloss Wartensee. Ah, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but in Gross Dershow, I was in Gross Dershow pretty much. Mm -hmm. And so, what what did it mean for you to be kind of like involved in guitar craft, like as you mm -hmm. said, like almost full time? Can you can you just describe that, like not just to me, but also to somebody who were kind of like not involved in that? Yeah, <clears throat> this uh, guitar craft is um, it's a school. Now it's the guitar circle, but in those days, guitar craft was was a school that um, there was not. Um, there w it wasn't just a building. It was a school that they would rent a house or or find a house somewhere, and and have a course there. So sometimes the course was uh, one week, sometimes it was three months. And as you moved, um, as you kept going, uh, mm -hmm. the course were long, courses were longer. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why my third level three course, it's a three months residential course. And level four is a, a one year residential course kind of residential because you can you can go home and then come back you you are not locked in it's not like a cloister or anything like this but mm -hmm. you can go back and come back you know these things is it's not um, a one year cloister that they lock the doors or something <laughs> so um but in the first courses they kind of um they or now me too we, we, i mean the how like what are the principles um on on guitar playing like on the movements of the hands on the picking on the, the the principles i don't know how to say that govern the playing or mm -hmm. the principles that that are applied mm -hmm. on 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 the guitar playing so they, they show you the the first exercises basic very basic exercises so you understand the principles mm -hmm. 
and then the exercises get a little more complicated and then very complicated until they get really crazy complicated but um they show it the exercises in the one week course and, and then you really need time to understand these principles and to make them yours in in your hands and for that if if i would come back home it would have been the end i, I you really need to apply yourself for a period of time mm -hmm. and practice the exercises thoroughly a few hours a day every day or most of the days mm -hmm. uh, for for you to get these exercises so basically the the level three the the, the residential courses uh, besides learning how to play with others and these things are learning how to cook and how to clean the house and many other things in terms of guitar playing it's a <clears throat> for me it, it was the the only opportunity to to work in a supportive supportive context with other people who are doing the same as i was doing mm -hmm. people who were like uh, not competitive but like supporting and um so it was a, the energy was very favorable for for learning and for mm. assimilating these these techniques because some people were uh, like much more advanced than i was so i was you could see them like wow and then you can kind of like hmm, this is how they do it mm -hmm. and robert would be would visit often and you know the the, the more experienced crafties would be there too so it was really for me the only way to learn and to as assimilate this mm -hmm. the, on on these uh, long courses we, where pretty much all you had to do was do the exercises uh, cook clean the house play practice <laughs> do the housework and that's it mm -hmm. that's it we used to have a couple of days off a week mm -hmm. and uh, but practice and practice and, and that's that's when i learned how to practice actually from from watching and most people were from germany actually uh, <clears throat> in the course mm -hmm. um, and by watching them it was like ah this is how you do it. you 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 sit on a stool for some time with the metronome and that's it even facing a wall you know or, or looking by the window or something mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. practice 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 you know <laughs> uh, I it, it would it would it wouldn't have been possible for me without these courses. Mm -hmm. So those were the yeah they they made it possible for me to learn how to play the guitar, which is what I asked I, what I, what I asked Robert uh, in the beginning. <laughs> I want yeah. to learn how to yeah. play the guitar, and and there you learned it. Yeah, yeah, I see. And uh, yeah, I I. I learn, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I... Like I'm, I'm kind of like still a little bit not sad or, or I'm not even jealous. But I never had the opportunity to have a long, a long course like mm. you, you had. Mm. Um, and in a way, I, 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 I really don't remember. I do not yeah. remember why that was. Like I don't think I was. Uh, in that period, I don't even know if there were any level two courses at all between 91 and 98 i can't remember i don't know or maybe yeah, i was yeah. maybe i wasn't invited or so i don't know um uh, yeah i mean i guess i would have been invited so that's why i think that's why i Marcus. think there were <laughs> <Marcus. laughs> is there any course coming up no <laughs> no it was it was interesting because i was strong enough to do the work on my own you know yes this is what i was thinking because for me this is what I had to do in order to achieve something. Yeah. If I would get back home, forget it. There was no way. And home was in Argentina because it's like, uh, what would I do in England? I was a foreigner with no passport. So for me, this was the only way. And for you, you had another way. Hey, now I, now I remember why. <laughs> now I know. Because I started playing the stick in 93. 
Ah, right? Okay. So and and that was um, after my I think after the first first couple times in Gorstesho, I think I started playing the stick, and that was when I. Um, I then came back to uh, on one course with Robert in Gostash or the application assimilation mm. two. Yes, maybe. I was there. I think it was two. Yeah, and um, and I was allowed to take part with this with the stick back then. That was mm. kind of like a, an exception, like to to be there with the stick, and that was like the famous course with the you playing the C major scale in circulation, going up and down, and that. You know that was that was incredible. That really that course really put me on the map, and that was that one really intense learning experience that really really uh, made me a professional musician. I would say, well, pro well, professional uh, uh, yeah. learner. Let's say, right? Yes, yeah, so that that's that's probably the exercise that um, some people is familiar with the circula circulations that we are sitting in a big circle and. We play one note. We pass the notes through mm -hmm. the circle. So one people, one person plays the C. The next one plays the D. Next the E. Mm -hmm. Then the X, the F, and so on, until the scale is completed up and down. Mm -hmm. And if somebody, I don't know if this is, was your case, but yes. if somebody yes. failed, yeah, you start over. <laughs> you start all over. So such a huge pressure. It's yes. amazing. Yes. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I remember. It was absolutely amazing. It took two hours and something, maybe longer. And on our course, it took six. It was six days, I think, and we never got through, not even once. And like at the end, like the the, the way that like we were almost through, and Alessandro Bruno, he rang the bell for tea, and and. We kind of like stopped on the way down, like, <laughs> and, and that's that's when we called it. It was like a Thursday afternoon, and yeah. it, the course was ending on Friday, and that was the end of it. <laughs> yeah, but it was yeah. so, it was such an amazing exercise. You know, I was already um, studying psychology at the time, and to see like really a lot of social psychology in action there, like seeing yeah. where where like for the first let's say for the first three days. The weaker people, let's say, were making the mistakes, <laughs> and then, yeah. like on the fourth day, like suddenly the strong people were breaking yes. and kind of like starting to make the mistakes. <laughs> and and I, I love that. I love that because at the beginning it's like, ah, oh, this fucker, he's oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. And then you have this guy, oh, then, oh, ah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It was it would was really um, put me on the map and put put C major on my fretboard. <laughs> yeah, it's an amazing way of um, learning the the scale. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and and um, responsibility and like if five fuck up now, <laughs> we'll be sitting here for another ten hours or something like this. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, and then for me it's also um, an amazing door uh, to miracles or something like this because some the, at some point it happens like the whole scale goes all the way up maybe in four octaves mm -hmm. and all the way down nobody makes a mistake mm -hmm. and you go like how is this possible I mean like the probability is one in a million mm -hmm. and, and it happens. Mm -hmm. So it's really amazing. I think this is really like, I don't know, grace or something like, wow, it is. this is, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. And I also believe that it is sort of really the, the state, like the mental place that you kind of like have to be in while you do that exercise. Or I think it's it obviously is different for everybody, but but somehow it is that place where, for me, real music starts happening. Like if nowadays I go in, into that to that place, I improvise. I can compose in the moment. It's yeah. it's sort of uh, it's fascinating that through such a structured, simple instruction, you know, you can you can kind of create that magic, as you call it. I, yeah. 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 This. 
what you say is, is really fundamental for me. Like th these days, I am. <clears throat> I'm. This is why I, I changed the, the date of this meeting so many times because I'm involved in the celebrations of uh, it's the seventieth birthday of Charlie Garcia, who is the Argentinian big star. He's an amazing, incredible musician, really so beloved in this country. He's so respected, mm -hmm. amazing musician. And um, he chose me as a guitarist in the band, the, state, the, um, the band for the celebrations. There will be a big concert next Saturday. Mm -hmm. So uh, he put together, uh, I don't know if he will play with us because he's like, we never know if he shows up or not. But uh, he put together the band and the repertoire. And all his career, so many songs, so many songs, so many chords, charts and arrangements. And I have uh, very little knowledge of harmony, you know, I, I'm not like a keyboard player. They, they go like, oh, this is the fourth and then they go to back to the seventh and then they, it resolves in the uh, <laughs> I, I have no idea of this, you know, mm -hmm. and my only way of connecting with this and, and being able to succeed which I hope I will, t playing these songs, the chords, is because of this connection that you just talked about. Mm -hmm. Because I get into the music and I know what comes next. I know the chords now. I know this. I know this, this connection with music. I learned through these exercises that you, you mentioned. Otherwise, there's another way that you know a lot of harmony, you know, and then you understand. Yeah, after the F comes, of course, the, the, the minor and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't know. I don't know about. So it's not my approach. Mm -hmm. My approach and the only way I can do it is through this connection and it's being in this state of um, uh, connection with the music. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which I, I, I see now that I learned through these exercises. Mm -hmm. Amazing. <laughs> yes, it is. It is r really incredibly amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like for me, because I as you said, as you, you know, you observed correctly, you know, I'm I'm sort of I'm classically trained. So mm. I, I sort of like have all that that background knowledge, all the music yeah. theory and everything like from the very beginning. And um, and I, you know, I just, I, I kind of have both, you know, I, ha I have that one way of memorizing or engaging with the, the musical materials, let's say, but I also have the approach that you described, you know, the one yeah. through yeah, the, yeah, yeah. and, and um, like for me, it's, it's, it's become, it's one thing, you know, like there is no, I wouldn't know, I'm kind of like, like, going like through this maze yeah. you know like <laughs> all the time and i i find it fascinating to to be able to kind of like zone into like or zo like zone out and just move my mm. fingers but then like a second later i could say oh i landed on a c and mm. i landed on mm. that note or mm. and then i know mm. and you know like the one my one kind of like uh, no, I don't want to say criticism, but observation, like about guitar craft back then, was obviously was that there was very little talk about um, composition or music theory, like yeah. like in a way there was, but like not in the in in the traditional way, right? Yes. And, it, yeah. Yeah, and I, I remember that there was like a like an eye-opening moment when when uh, when I started learning the modes, like with like four fingers, four notes per string, and stuff like that. And I think that was that was kind of like important. But you know, and but also like ninety one when I started was still early early days. Like that was mm. like like six years, right? Of of uh, of courses yeah. for Robert only, and I think I think Bert Lambs was who introducing the the tetrachords that you mentioned, the four notes yeah. each string. Yes, and uh, that was <clears throat> pretty much my my only uh, mm -hmm. exposure to that. Like mm -hmm. my, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And then I learned the modes. That's it. Yeah. I think for for me, in a sense, the, the good thing of um, of of that lacking, I mean, actually, we, we know that <clears throat> you have the, all these these elements because you started somewhere else. Yeah. Robert also had these elements because he started he studied somewhere else or mm -hmm. he knows a lot about this. Mm -hmm. I remember he used to kind of like uh, tease me and go like, uh, how do you um, even in meals, you know, who put me on the spot because I was I was going to become a professional musician. So you need to know these things, Fernando. Mm -hmm. I say, how do you substitute these chords and 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 mm -hmm. I was completely clueless. I'm still so bad at this, you know. I mean? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So actually, he suggested very um, strongly that we go and study these things uh, outside guitar craft. <clears throat> actually, he suggested that I would go to MIT mm -hmm. in in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, he suggested this to Alex, Anthony, Fide, and myself. Mm -hmm. that we go to MIT. This was going to be our next mm -hmm. uh, our ne next step. And I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I, I went back to Buenos Aires and I found my wife and I got married and mm -hmm. no MIT. Good, good uh, call. Good call. Very good call. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I think I think in Guitarcraft um, there was, um, and there still is, um, encourage, encouragement to to learn these things, but um, find your own way, yeah. learn these things, and really master these things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that they say, this is not good, this is useless, it's not at all. They really encourage, but I, I didn't do it, but, but it, it is encouraged. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, <clears throat> I think this is a personal view. Sometimes if, if I would have learned the rules, I would have um, played by the rules instead, because I didn't know any of these rules. In my music, one of the things I think I'm successful in the music, in my records, is like, I go uh, with innocence. I don't know. I go to this court. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. So it's like more like I feel more like a child like going like yeah. with innocence that I think maybe in my case, because with this theory things, if you don't go kind of further and you stay in the beginning, you, you can make like normal music all the time and it's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. so you really have to. I, I know I know what you mean. How, however, like my response to that is it also really depends um, which teacher you meet, right? Yes. Like yes. So, so so for example, like for me, when I teach the basics of music theory, I start from a point where everything is open. Like so where where there are no rules. And like the story that I tell people, which literally is a story, is yeah is is that all 12 notes are the same and you always go from one note to the next which is the fifth yeah. the circle of fifth and everything yeah. is the same and then at some point somebody just decided not to use all 12 notes yeah and then only then does sort of like the diatonic system appear or the pentatonic system and stuff like that and i really think it just depends on how it's passed on and i think that there is sort of an equivalent to the exercises in guitar craft that can like as you said the principles they can also be applied to uh to learning music theory or to learning composition yeah. and and that's sort of like what what you know kind of like i did and that's why i'm like in, in you know like forever grateful for what robert did or you know, well did you know what he passed on yeah. is is that uh I was able to apply those principles to many different parts of my life and to many different uh, areas of music. Hmm. But but you are a good teacher. Like normally, I mean, there there are there are many good teachers. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you get to a teacher who is not good, yeah, and then you know the rules, and then you you are you yeah. spend your whole life going. 
no, no, these are the rules. You can't play this chord. Mm -hmm. Why? No, 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 no. After this chord, you can't play this chord. Yeah. You can't yeah. play this note because this is the right note according <laughs> to the rules. You see, but, but you're a good teacher yeah. because you say you can play any note. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have, um, you have an understanding and um, you see me music from a different place. Mm -hmm. It's not the, the standard, you know. Yeah. I'm always like um, one. Once a student came to me and said, "I want to." I, I said, what, "What? What is your aim? Why, why do you want to study how to play guitar?" He said, "I want to be a good guitarist." I said, "This is that's nothing. What? What for? <laughs> I mean, to be a good guitarist or be? Do you have to be? This, music is art. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mm -hmm. you don't." I mean, to be a good guitarist or a good music, what does it mean? Yeah. But it's already late. You need to do something new. You have to do something fresh, more than good, something like interesting or something like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and, and... Yeah, the, the rules, I'm like, um, I think it's, it's good that I, I didn't get into that because of that. Like, I have... Um, for some things, it, it makes it more difficult for me because I don't know all these rules that's, that many good musicians know. So for me, it's more difficult. But um, on the other hand, it's like a handicap that it becomes an advantage, some, so to say. I, I have to put up with that. Um, it's like when, when I'm, I'm short-sighted. <laughs> when you're short-sighted, you have to develop more of your ears. Maybe something mm -hmm. like this. So mm -hmm. it's like uh, maybe it's a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed, yes. Right-handed. Yes. You too. Mm -hmm. I'm left-handed. Ah. Yeah, but so I, how, I how but I play right. I play right-handed. Ah, okay. And that was okay. Maybe it's also a, a hand, um, an advantage. And it's an advantage. Yeah, yeah. Of course ah. it is. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like like for me, it was. It felt natural to pick up the guitar like this, like the huh. regular, the regular way, you know, yeah, like yeah. even that, yeah, hmm. yeah. That that was a, one of the first uh, questions I asked Robert in my very first uh, personal meeting with him because he was also lefty, right? But he doesn't yes. play lefty, and so, yeah. so I asked him, like, and he said, yeah, he, he doesn't know because because he's always played it yeah. this way, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like you know, music, and you said that um, like your your primary uh, motivation is music itself, and that is that is really the most important. And somehow, somehow, uh, practicing music is sort of uh, working on your relationship with music. That's yeah. sort of how I see it, and really, mm -hmm. uh, really, like the the it's about the quality and not necessarily about even the content of what you practice or. Yes. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it is. It is the quality, really, because I could. I, I'm. It, it's difficult for me to sit to sit on a stool for a, for a long time and practice. So, I really have to make a good use of the time and really practice well with quality, with attention, and really focused, mm -hmm. because otherwise it's really a waste. For me. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask you some nerdy things? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so over the years, like, uh, so it's uh, been thirty-two years that you've been involved in that school of playing, let's say. Yes. And um, so, do you, do you still play um, the original, like the uh, old standard tuning? No, only no. music. Yeah. No, only yeah. sometimes in some uh, guitar lessons mm -hmm. because the students uses the old tuning so i i show the stuff with the old tuning otherwise yeah. it's more complicated yeah yeah and yeah. I, I i don't force like the the students to, to say ah you have to use the new standard tuning because mm -hmm. it's bad yeah. this is pretty it's good mm -hmm. no if they use the old tuning so that i use for that but when i when i left rosario and i was playing in, in rock and and pop bands uh, i i didn't have too much to lose really I, I i didn't know much so i kind of 
yeah. abandoned. And so it, it was as if Robert said to me, this is how the guitar is tuned. Yeah. And I said, OK, yeah, OK. So I only play this this tuning. And um, even if I play with Charlie Garcia or with uh, uh, the guitar craft contexts or anything, I only play this this uh, this the so-called guitar craft new standard tuning, which is C, G, D, A, E, G. Yeah, it's uh, mostly in fifths. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I only play that tuning. I, I, I... Um, me, me too. I mean, like ah. ever since 91, I haven't I haven't really practiced on an instrument tuned in fourths, you know. Just just recently, I I recorded a new album with Gary Husband um, in yes, Spain. Yes, I, I, I saw this. And I actually like it will be a surprise to people, but I play nylon string guitar tuned in fourth wow. on on the on the opening track, and uh -huh. it was just sitting there in the studio. And I said, "Oh come on, I'll just I'll just take it." And I improvised on it, and it was as if as if I had always played like like all the notes were perfect like it was really fast really fascinating so uh, uh it was like 30 years um huh. that i hadn't touched a, an instrument tuned in fourth so the the touch guitar that you used it's it's in fifth yeah so it's the the middle the middle the middle six strings at the fifth fret um are tuned well no actually at the seventh fret Tuned like the like the guitar. That's the NST basically. Really, and yeah. the stick the same like the the stick that Tony Levin plays. No, that's that's a different tuning. Ah, like, I like, thought... like, Yeah. So he has the open the uh, he has fifth going up this way and fourth going up that way, ah. and it's uh, yeah it's different. Like I'm using a tuning that. Funnily enough, Trey and I kind of like came up with um, almost at the same time, ah, which was so which it... was a variation of the of the NST on a ten string or twelve string stick, and then mm. when when Trey had his eight string guitar, and you know I started playing uh, the war guitar in uh, eight string war guitar in ninety six, and and that was that was like the eight string tuning kind of like appeared then. And ah, it's, okay. it basically has an extra extra low fifth underneath, like right. So like uh, yes. would be would be a C. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Uh, and then it has the uh, the high A, like ah, the high A, uh, like so a, a major second on top. Ah, ah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, so 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 you play guitar is like because I thought that touch guitar was more like a stick. More related to the stick than the guitar, but as for what you say, it's more. Like, it's a guitar. It's, it's it's more. It's a guitar, and you know that at some point I started designing my own instruments. And yes, I know. And, they and, look and, very nice. Thank you. And at, <laughs> at at that point, it was really like I only wanted to, because like one of the problems uh, with the stick and other touch instruments was that they've there wasn't much experience. Uh, not not many really experienced players playing it so so then when i thought okay like i have some understanding now about the technique i wanted to build an instrument for the technique so it was not about inventing an instrument it was just yeah. for the technique so as a tool right a yeah. tool and and so when i went to the to the luthier and i said to him i want you to build like the most traditional electric guitar instrument you can like everything should kind of like say i'm a guitar i'm a guitar yeah, yeah. Else but a guitar yeah. but let's just sort of make it work for the technique and ah. uh, and so that's why yeah the, the the touch guitar really you know if you if it is you can you can you will be uh, able to immediately play it huh. yeah because yeah. of the tuning is because of the tuning and also just the the way that it kind of it has it's very compact you know it just feels like maybe like a baritone guitar Right, mm -hmm. so it's it doesn't feel like a bass, and and it has like this this very 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 um, smooth action, and mm. it's just just feels it just feels like like any other great in guitar instrument, really, oh. Oh. and yeah mm -hmm. yeah I, I see it I see it as a guitar nowadays, and really what sets it apart is the the touch technique, so which is again very different from tapping on a guitar. Because tapping on a guitar is kind of integrated into the concept of picking or strumming mm. or 
or finger finger style of some sort. Yeah. Um, so that means like a lot of hammer on and pull off is involved in tapping on guitar. Yes. But on touch guitar, I've like the the focus like when I when I teach a new student is to start with the pure touch technique. So which is you start a note with one finger and you end a note with one finger, and there's uh -huh. no and then there's no hammer on or pull off involved uh, at all. Violent. <laughs> yeah it's it's yeah. it is it's really it's really a very very satisfying way of playing mm. a guitar instrument like, so basically it's like um, like having two left hands <laughs> yeah like having two left hands but the difference is that you you sort of you have to uh also uh put the energy to make the string vibrate into the string mm. so it's it's really it's very very different from the mm. left hand because the left hand on guitar does not have to generate the, the, the notes, really, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like, yeah, if you, you know, like most people who play a lot, they can do that. But, you know, like you have the other hand. Um, yes. And, and it's, it's a really, like I said, it's a really satisfying way because mm -hmm. it kind of like unifies the body, like in the two sides of the body and both hands have the mm -hmm. same technique and it's, it's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah, I, I really admire that you make these instruments and you you really and you have all this 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 families exercises. I go like, wow, yeah. you really took it <laughs> uh, forward. Yeah, really amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was I was shocked in the early 90s when I when I learned that there was no tradition, like nobody knew how to play mm -hmm. it and you nobody dared to say, uh, you know, how to play it. And mm -hmm. uh, so no, I, I'm, I'm, and you know, I, I'm not even interested really in playing. You know, I'm more mm. about the music. Mm. <laughs> so, so that's why, um, sort of like designing the instrument wasn't so much an act of trying to invent something special. It was just about kind of like uncovering, um, or discovering a guitar instrument that works very well for that technique. Yeah. This, in terms of um, being interested interested more in the music than the playing, mm -hmm. I remember in the in the in the early nineties, I used to go to record stores to look for records and listen to many records and and expecting something. Oh, I I hope I would love this record. And then I would listen to it and I would say, yeah, it's good, but, mm. and then I, and so on. I, I kept, I was looking for some music that others made until one day I realized the music I'm looking for is the music I have to play. So I'm fucked. I thought I'm fucked because it's easy, easier for me that somebody else does it. And I buy and I buy the record for twelve dollars or something. I'm so happy, but nobody did it, so I had to do it. So I thought, really, I'm fucked. So I had to learn. I had to practice. I had to record. I have to begin a career, and 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 and, and I had to do it myself. I kind of it was a big discovery, you know. Like it was like shit. It was not like, oh, yeah, it's good. Like, oh, no, I have to do it. Nobody else will do it for me. And uh, and this is also why I, I keep making music, because I I think we see music in a way that nobody else sees it. Mm -hmm. Not even not for me, even I mean, I really, as you know, how I admire Robert, not even Robert. Uh, can play the music I see or I hear or I, mm -hmm. I, I think it needs to be played. Nobody in the world. So, you, so you, this is why I practice because I. Yeah, you see, this music you see again. Needs... That's that is that is that is exactly the parallel that we have again. Like it's exactly the same for me, and you know, yeah. for for me, it was the actually took the form of a recurring dream. Really, I wasn't, I was in my dream. I was going into that record store looking mm. for what, what I, in my dream, called the Holy Grail, which wow. was ridiculous. I had yeah. this dream and wow. like, like, you know, I mean, this record store was in a, 
in a big department store like and it would took a while to get there it was like a like a labyrinth like getting to yeah. the place and, <laughs> and and just like you were saying at some point i realized or once i started making my own music suddenly the the dream started fading and i yeah. realized Okay, so now that I'm making that music, I don't need to look for it anymore in obscure yeah. places. You know? Yeah, yeah, we have to do it. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, in, when you when you're making your solo records, how do they how do they come about usually for you? Yeah, but when when I make my solo records, <clears throat> I never I never <clears throat> start like going. I am going to record an album, so um, mm -hmm. I have the compositions and so on. All all my records are like a, a collection of. Um, well, when one of the records that uh, told me this is this is um, a valid way of making records. It's um, another green world by Brian Eno, mm -hmm. and uh, exposure also. Mm -hmm. Like, so I, I I got that as a. It's a collection of um, things. It's like, it's more like paintings or um, sketches, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, I, if, if you see some like a poet writing on a little notebook or, or um, a painter going and uh, making a sketch, drawing something or going crazy with a canvas, I see more this approach. Mm -hmm. And I think music with, um, with time, it, um, it was lacking this, this, this thing. So I kind of, I, I feel that this is the way for me sketches with my guitar in my studio actually it began when i was staying at uh, robert's cottage in, in broadchalk in england by myself nothing to do but playing the guitar uh practicing going for walks feeding the rabbit going to the pub nothing so i was um playing loops and recording with my dad's tape loops and ideas, little things. Mm -hmm. So basically recording stuff like sketches and stuff. Some things later, I I make a selection. And uh, it's always it, it's still the same. I, I make a selection of all these sketches. And on some sketches, I add some noises, some other instruments. I invite other musicians, even singers. But it, it, it all starts with uh, just an idea on the guitar. So I always follow my fingers. I follow my feet with the pedals, with the knobs. I'm very intuitive with the knobs. And I go like, oh, this is a nice sound. So mm -hmm. I play with this. I record something. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And then I make a selection. I record some other stuff on top. And then I have a collection of songs or pieces uh, and then I put them together I mix them yeah master a cover <laughs> so that's pretty much the process I, I don't go into I have a song or I have a piece yeah. Um, yeah. and always when I invite friends is like uh, when I'm in, I invite friends to to play uh, at, at, as a little kid you know like do what you like like, what do you want me to do? Do what you like, do what you feel like doing. So they get the f headphones and they start doing whatever. And I always say to my friends, use the sounds and do, do whatever nobody allows you to do in the other projects, you know, because they all <laughs> play more official music. I know many keyboards player, like the, play, the keyboard player I play with Matthias Mango, he has amazing sounds. But he never uses them when he plays with singers mm -hmm. because they go like what's this weird shit you know <laughs> so i said i say all these weird sounds all the sounds that you never use with anybody you we are free to use them here mm -hmm. so this is how i build them 
following my fingers. I, a nice, nice idea. Yeah. And then I make a selection of that. I, my last album, uh, it's called Deeper Man. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I recorded in well, it's during the lockdown, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I was alone at home. I learned how to use the Cubase to record. Um, and I had this idea one day I will only use for these recordings in the next couple of months, only electric guitar and delays and reverb, of course, but no effects, no other sounds. So only electric guitar and delay. So it would, uh, that was my only composition. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I recorded everything. Like when you say you're making a selection, like how many, how many pieces do you actually record and how many end, end up on, on an album? Maybe, oh, 3%. Really? Okay. Something. Yeah, I record yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. I record yeah. a lot, and then, <laughs> and then I, which I, I, it, it's kind of a, oh, li listening to. But I always mark like this is a good one, and then mm -hmm. and this is another good, yeah, and then. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> when 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 it, it, when something has value, <clears throat> I'm like, I know. It has a value, at least for me, and uh, and then by I don't know what's the, the how is it called. If it has value for me, maybe it has value for somebody else who lives yeah. in, in China or in in Turkey or in, in <laughs> Seattle. I don't know. So this is how I I judge it. This is, ah, yeah. I resonate. This is, this is cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, uh, again like so many parallels. Hmm. So I sort of ended up in a place where, and this is, you know, largely maybe because of practicality. So I don't have a studio. I don't even have my instrument set up. Um, you know, I really always, whenever I need to do something, I need to set up everything and. Uh, and so, which means I don't set up things often. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. <clears throat> I mean, I am in my house. I, I, this is my house living room. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I quit my studio. This mm -hmm. is my living room. Mm -hmm. I am at the end of the living room and setting up all the gear now. Yeah, you know, for me nowadays, it's like I. It's it is somewhat like that. I decide to make an album, I set up, I play for an hour, and it's done. Huh? Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah. It has become my mode of working. Huh. Um, and out of out of necessity, really. Um, and and actually i guess a lot out of like the necessity of um, not being very uh inspired or made motivated most of the time it's really only when i put myself into the situation where i sort of where i'm sort of forced to deliver a little bit like that circulation exercise with yes. nature <laughs> right so yeah. i i create a situation like that and then i sort of like create and the music just pours out you know wow yeah. So, so you have you have previous ideas, of course. You have pieces or, or patterns no, of things. No, no, nothing. No. I mean, wow. it's yeah. And I've been doing doing this for a few years now, and it's it's really just become my preferred mode. Well, I have many different modes of composing. Yeah. You know, obviously, yeah. I also can sit down and write something, yeah. and I do that occasionally. But but when I when I improvise and like you say, I'm, if I'm doing the intuitive writing then um, I, I try to, well, not I try to, I sort of like know that, okay, this is going to be it. And I usually also even keep the order of the pieces exactly in the order that I perform. Wow. Them. Yeah. So you deliver the whole album. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I will try that one, one day. Maybe. You should, you should try it. It's, it's really, it's really incredibly so in powerful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, From beginning. Yeah. 
Like there's there's one called Anchor and Burden that I just released, which was actually mm. done that way. And this was the first time that I documented it. So there's a video of the whole recording process, which takes actually 50 minutes or something. And so yeah. it's a live album. It's a live album, yeah. 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 And and I've, I've found that to be sort of like the ideal place for, again, for, for the connection with magic and with music and it's um, interesting yeah, yeah. yeah mine is more like a reality show album it's like, <laughs> document for three months <clears throat> three months every day and then i make a selection yeah you know i think at some point i would really got uh fed up with having to organize the files and having to remember and like labeling them and listening to them and <laughs> and making decisions i'm very very bad at making decisions when it comes because like who who says that this is this piece is better than yeah, that? Yeah, like... that, that's that's the worst part. That's that's the worst part. Maybe. That's that's the worst part when when you have all these things and here's my I I use this old <laughs> note yeah, again, yeah, yeah. full of notes and and signs. Yeah. No, I remember when when I was still doing it your way, let's say, where I was like select, collecting pieces and then I would make a selection, like mm. on my first few solo albums, I always had to um, ask my girlfriend at the time to help me organize <laughs> and write the list. And because I just couldn't, I just couldn't focus on that. And like making those choices was really hard for me. So that's why no, I, 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 <laughs> I love this idea. I really love it. I, I I, I will I will try it. Yeah, you should you should do it. Yeah, one hour. So, yeah. So 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 your record is only work only touch guitar sound with 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 uh, with looping, yeah. With looping, but only there's no yeah. drum. Nothing. nothing. No. 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 Of course not. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I I I I tell you a funny story that I one of my albums is called The Flower and the Radio. <clears throat> it ended up being a double. I had so much stuff, mm -hmm. so much, so much, so many pieces, so many good things that, which I liked so much that organizing was so difficult, as you say, like the file and the names is like the name is like MN325, <laughs> N325 one. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 it was hard work. And I put them together. Okay, this is uh, the first album and the, the first first CD and second CD. Okay, I listened to it so many times in my car, going for walks in my house. <clears throat> so okay, this is it. Then I put the names on because I don't know how the tracks will be called. So I, I make up names. Mm -hmm. So okay, done. When the record comes out, I realize that there's one piece that it appears on both yes. <laughs> under different names, but it's, it's exactly the same audio. It's the same track with different name. Mm -hmm. Nobody mm -hmm. realized, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 wonderful. It's, that's wonderful, man. It's yeah. <laughs> it's too much. Yeah, it's too much. And I know I know exactly what you're talking about. Like for me nowadays, it's even like have I used like when I come up with names for for pieces, have I used this before? Like yeah, <laughs> and I can't remember. And like I recently, know, yeah. recently, you have there, to... yeah, you recently there was a go. there was a case where where I actually had already used name and uh, I don't know. anyway. Oh, yeah. On this last one, I used. Um, <clears throat> I was reading John Bennett's book, so I decided to use names from. From mm -hmm. things uh, from the book, yes. Even the even the book's name. <laughs> hey, so on your on your Bandcamp page, you you I see you only have nine albums there, but you've made many more. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't put them all there because so, some were released in Japan, so I didn't want to interfere with the with the with that. And, and, and you can't really limit the territories, can you? No, I you can. No. You can do that now. Yes, you can. Really? Yeah. Ah, yeah. 
but it may may depend on the kind of uh, Vancamp account you have. You have. Ah, uh, maybe I need a pro account or something. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, but, okay. Because but it is possible now. Yeah. Okay, I I didn't want to interfere with the Japanese labels business by putting the record on Bandcamp as well. So, but but if I can do that, maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll put them all there. Yeah. Well, like when which. When did you put your first solo album out? That was mid nineties, right? Like I because mid I remember. Yeah. House is one. It's House called. is one, yeah. Mid mid nineties. And really I, I didn't want to I, I didn't want the solo career. I didn't become a solo I, I was playing with the you know the gauchos, the mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. and playing with the league and the gauchos and the, with these crafty projects. I, and, and playing with some singers, I didn't want to be a solo guitarist, or, but but this happened, you know. This there was this music that, but my bandmates wouldn't really care for. Nobody would care for, so it had to be my my album under my name, and uh, so I, this is. I thought, okay, I will put my album, my solo album, out. This is in, uh, yeah in the nineties, and then every couple of years I I have this 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 thing comes back like oh it's time for another for another one, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but but pretty much because of that it's like I'm looking for music to listen to, and this is not out there. <laughs> I go like okay maybe. Steve Reich, okay. Then I play Steve Reich. Nah, hey Brian Eno, mm -hmm. yeah, great. But no, nah, <laughs> this is not what I mean. Or and so on and so on. And then okay, time to work again. <laughs> it's it's great that um, you have said this in this conversation because mm. I think it's not often enough is this being uttered by musicians that that's the main motivation the main inspiration is to kind of like because you want to hear that music that you're looking for right yeah and, and you're the only one who can make it happen yeah and you go like why nobody's it's like when you see something and nobody says anything and nobody why nobody says this you know mm. and then you have to say it <laughs> yes yes and you know that that my my discovery of um, King Crimson and and Robert Fripp or Tony right mm. was uh, actually uh, hearing uh, the Discipline album just the but really just the first few seconds Elephant Talk right so just the first few seconds and the the feeling that I had was exactly this one that ah there is music out there that is yeah. like the one in my head yeah. so it was kind of like the opposite. Like, so there yeah. was this rec I recognized that there is sort of like a, a similarity there. Yeah. And, look, and that, like, yeah. This is the way. Yeah. And it's, it's, it. it's super, it's super powerful, you know? Yes. And this is what I, what I kind of like try to encourage people. Um, well, like people who are my fans or my friends yeah. or like I, I encourage yeah. them to kind of like recognize or to to learn to understand that the things that they recognize as their own that that is kind of like the world they need to interact with yes you know? and 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 yeah. quite often quite quite often it leads to those people also becoming artists and i i love that when people discover yeah uh, yeah. yeah on the other hand i mean like I, I I tend to think <clears throat> that <clears throat> anybody is more qualified than me for anything. <laughs> I mean, there's all the guitarists that they ah they can really play, mm -hmm. uh, they really studied, they re they're really good, not like me. I suck. I mean, they're, they're really more qualified than me. And I keep saying, but one do why don't they do anything about this? You know, and they keep. They are really quali qualified. They have the the tools. They have the abilities. They can really play. And why can why they are still making this music instead of doing something else? I don't know what is this something else, but why don't they do it? And then I go like, okay, I have to do it. I'm not qualified. I'm not, but I have to do it myself. It's, it's, it's like this. 
Hey, so let me just just for because we've always almost talked two hours and it went so fast. Hey, uh, so I want to come back to like like a really like nerdy question. So in your um, practice of uh, the guitar and let's just say your calisthenics work, yes. right? What is kind of like the current thing you're working on? And uh, yeah, just go go. No, no. V very basic. I always um, stick to very basic. I got this this guitar just from the luthier today, and it mm -hmm. feels it plays so so nice, so easy. So mm -hmm. I play very basic. Um, I don't have a strap, but <laughs> very basic combinations to to warm up. Like uh, I, I can I get a strap. <laughs> very basic exercises not mm -hmm. so complicated like this there's this guy you know andres cecarelli torito from mendoza you know mm -hmm. he, he comes up with all this yes all these combinations and which are amazing Some, mm -hmm. sometimes i just grab one of those mm -hmm. and and i i work for for months with just mm -hmm. one trying to get one of these mm -hmm. while he mm -hmm. changes every time so i I do basic things like from this this basic or yeah. uh, 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 so just to get my fingers moving yeah, yeah, with yeah. basic and one one thing I I discovered recently which for me was a major d discovery is that it is about the movement of the hand. It's not about the uh, stopping the strings. Mm -hmm. It's about the movement. It's like yeah. so. What, what we are learning and what we are practicing and we are, what we are like really acquiring is the the movement, yes. not the the strength and the doing. You know, but the movement. How the hand moves, as if it would be a. Um, I'm not a dancer, I never dance, but I can imagine that more like a um, Tai Chi guy or, yeah. or a dancer, you know, is the movement. So every time I find my that that's why I practice simple things, because on simple things, I can I, I can look at the quality of how am I doing this? How am I playing this? When I get into too much, you know, too complicated stuff, I lost that and it became a, like a mechanic, more a mechanic thing. <laughs> so I, 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 I found that uh, it's about the movement. How do I execute the movement and how, f how free my hand is to move yeah. freely and with some grace. If I'm like, and then I, oh no, stop. And then I go, mm -hmm. and, then, and then I stop and then I go, but always with simple things. So all these, these combinations, and I always go back to the, you know, the moving force thing. Mm -hmm. This thing, or the fracture. Yeah, yeah. And so on, these, these things really get, and then this, this. Uh, all the secondaries or even the, the, the The primaries, very basic, or the secondaries on, on some key. Yeah. And so on. These things. I do this very basic. I I, I know I'm supposed to, to 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 get it more complicated and always, but but really <laughs> like for for instance, these these days I'm working on so many songs by Charlie Garcia and so many arrangements and some so so really my the exercise is, is really basic, which I think is fine. Like I, I I've been to some like Tai Chi or yoga classes and they're not like all the time coming up with something new and something they they, they practice the the sun salutation or the the, the the third exercise that goes like this and 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 so I, I think it's okay I don't feel bad about that about not being so innovative about uh, 
then uh, I go backwards and then forwards and then three times backwards and then cross. I'm, I'm, I'm more basic. <laughs> it, it's not my, this calis, calisthenics um, development is not my, my, my forte really. But I, I admire people who do it, but I'm, I, I work basic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you said something extremely important that it's about the movement like yeah the, the way and the i think the metaphor with the dancers is pretty much yeah. true also for how i think yeah. of it like like how how do i move from one part of the yeah. fretboard to another and like yeah. that's that's what makes the music for me as well and and it's true it's true like that you, when you say okay it's simple stuff right but if you want to play it right if you want to play yeah. it beautifully it's not simple yeah. and light lightly well, and lightly, um, yeah and I, I really I think this um, because this is a new discovery about this the, the movement thing and and really resonates with something that Robert says that Fripp says that I will say it in a very cheap way mm -hmm. that music resides between the notes, mm -hmm. so it's not in the notes, so it's yeah. between the notes as between the musicians, mm -hmm. so it's it's yes. it's the movement and it's the flow. And the, the, this quality of flow and movement is what makes music uh, possible to be there. Otherwise, it's like um, a collection of notes. It's like um, yeah, more, which some people are very good at, but but it's not my my thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was a good call not to go to MIT then. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would have been a, a bad a bad. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, I I I I really I really feel uh, grateful that, <clears throat> for instance, uh, I I didn't I never went to MIT, and uh, I'm friends of Joe Satriani, for instance, and he respects me, mm -hmm. and my playing, and maybe, so maybe this big or, or Vernon Reed, he's all Vernon is my friend, and also respects me, so I think. If I would uh, have tried to be like them, you know, playing fast. So I think I I, I did. So may, maybe my my wife uh, saved me, saved me from from. She that. did. She did. <laughs> yeah. You you should be very grateful about your wife. But, but I must also say I can also play fast. Mm -hmm. I can also play, I'm not, I'm not saying like, oh, I, I, I can't play fast, but I can also play fast because I play light. Uh, I, I, I find the easy way mm -hmm. of moving and, 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 and doing, um, not doing too much. So I can play fast. I, I kind of uh, found the way. Yeah. Without, you know, yeah. You know, like uh, in in the touch guitar circle, so the uh, study group that that I have, like there is this recent development, which is something that has been kind of like obvious to me for a long time, but now it's come up in the in the group, mm -hmm. is this question like, do we actually prepare the next move or do we not prepare it, right? Mm -hmm. And this is maybe different for a guitar, but on touch guitar, like no, the, the current answer to that question is no, obviously we don't, we do not. We always stay where we are because the movement and again, like the, the analogy with the dancers is like you only you only move when you know where you where you're going. Right. So in an improvisational context, you, you don't want to know where you're going. Right. So no. you want you want to be ready, like in a position of readiness, like in every single note becomes a position of readiness in the flow of the of the playing. And in, in a context like that, speed becomes something really interesting yes. because because it means you have to you have to surrender totally to to your body. Yeah. Like you cannot control anymore which note you're going to play. You just go for it. Right. You go for it. Yeah. I, I I make a, even a, a more um, cheap analogy with with soccer. You know, I, I see football. I, I like watching football, mm -hmm. and I, I keep thinking for the football players, it's like that. You know, they never know where the ball is coming from. Mm -hmm. It's like they they can't anticipate anything. It's just like in the moment, 
Mm -hmm. And in the moment, they can't think of any technique or what note is it. They just hit it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, is, they have a, a millionth of, of a second, you know, to, to move to. Yeah, yeah. they can't, can't anticipate. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Famous last words here. Soccer. <laughs> <laughs> from yeah. an Argentinian that's that's yeah. very fitting yeah, yeah. yeah. hey yeah. thank you thank you so much for this I mean I, I learned so much about you and I I think your 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 story there is is incredible and I'm I'm glad yeah. to see that it's still unfolding and that, that you yeah have... don't, I would say like they say don't try this at home you know like <laughs> it's no. not that I'm suggesting go go and knock knock on, on on somebody's door you know say i am looking for you i came from norway to look for you but i know no you should you should encourage people to do it really <laughs> like obviously they shouldn't do it at home because yeah no <laughs> not no, <at> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, nowadays nowadays it's more it's easier to 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 realize these things to do these things in those days that was the only way living in Argentina, not even in Buenos Aires. It, it was the only way I could um, get it done. I could I, I could do it. It was the only way. Mm -hmm. So that that's why I do I did. But uh, and it worked. Like uh, I, I would I wouldn't say like uh, miraculously, but it, 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 I I was I was lucky. Yeah. yeah. And I it, maybe because I needed it. It, this this needed to happen for me. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, thank you, my friend. Thank you, I, Marco. I, I hope I, to see you somewhere in the world. I hope so Soon. too. Yeah. Bye yeah. bye. Bye bye. Uh, I read that maybe maybe there's a tour in last South America for Stigman. Yeah, at some point there will be. I know it's already uh, in the books somehow somewhere. I hope. <laughs> yeah, go Leonardo. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. Bye bye, Fernie. Thank you. Bye-bye.